The Scoob movie was going to come back. I don't even know it was a thing until it was announced to be cancelled, but hey, it's been one of the biggest suggestions as of late, so let's get into it. Scoob 1 was a box office flop. I have a whole mini history with Scoob, as it was set to be a brand new cinematic universe for the Hanna-Barbera collective, and I was pretty hyped on the idea, until it ended up being a cliche mess of poor jokes and awful execution. I mean, come on, the Simon Cow gag is literally from the early 2000s. I was not impressed. And I voiced my thoughts on it before, but even still, it was set to return. Despite only grossing $27 million against its $90 million budget. So how does that work? Well, apparently it all came down to the VOD popularity and the fact that it did well on HBO. And so it earned a sequel. 49% reviews on Rotten Tomato be damned. And so, in July of 2021, Scoob was revealed to be co-directed by Bill Haller and Michael Korinsky, and the director of the first one, and now writer and producer of the sequel, Tony Savone. I assume it is Savone. Tony Savone for Tony Savone. Oh, that's nice. And the director of the first one, and now writer and producer of the sequel, Tony Savone, first mentioned it with, Actually, we are kicking the tires on a follow-up to Scoob. It hasn't been announced yet, but it's something we're all excited about. The whole creative team that made the first movie is still around and back and working on something new. It was neat to create this Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe, and it's exciting to return to it. And though I myself may be less so on the side of Scoob and their final outcome, I can always cheer on for a dedicated team that is passionate about what they're doing. And so this new Scoob sequel was to be titled Scoob Holiday Haunt as this was set to be a Christmas movie this time around. Holiday Haunt was set to reunite the pre-teens of Mystery Inc. as they investigate a Christmas-themed resort owned by Fred's favourite uncle, Ned. Uh, oh, that that's actually a thing. Okay. Only appearing in one DC comic in the past, but still, the clown owner of a travelling carnival show. I guess that's why Scoob's a reboot, to introduce characters to clueless schmucks like me. Still, Shaggy and the gang soon get spooked when they learn that a mean old ghost has been lurking in the park for more than 40 years. Classic. And an interesting direction for the Scoob IP, as yes, it's targeting specifically the pre-teen era of the Scooby gang. Essentially chucking away the old celeb cast of the original. I mean, that makes sense. I probably couldn't afford Zac Efron for a follow-up either. Now there is an additional description of the synopsis I found that fills in a couple other gaps in places, so... To celebrate Scooby-Doo's first Christmas, 10-year-old Shaggy and the gang take him to a holiday-themed resort owned by Fred's favourite uncle, Ned. When the park is beset by a ghostly haunting, the kids must solve a 40-year-old mystery to save the resort and show Scooby the true meaning of Christmas. Ah, It's the uncle testing them to see if they're like family, isn't it? Regardless, that was the premise, and on the business side of things, Scoob 2 was expected to go straight to HBO Max. After all, Scoob 1 flopped in cinemas during the height of the pandemic, and clearly got a second wind with this burgeoning new market. As for the budget, it was slashed by more than half to just $40 million now to make Scoob 2. Which, honestly is about as low budget as an animated film is allowed to go. Truly cutting costs to make the most efficient project. As for the cast, it was all very much set up, with Frank Welker and all the young cast returning, and then no one else. No Ken Jeong, no Amanda Seyfried, no Mark Wahlberg, but instead, other new names popped up for Scoob 2, including the likes of Mark Hamill, Crystal Fernandez, Michael McKean, Andre Brower, Ming-Na Wen, and Jim Meskimen. A full shuffle. I'd also be interested to hear how the connected universe thing would work out, considering many more characters were established later in the timeline, but that's clearly not the priority of the movie. And so production went very deeply in, with director Michael Korinsky blurting out that he can't wait for everyone to see it. We're getting very close to wrapping it up. We actually just completed animation on Friday, just this past Friday, as in July 29th. We still have a lot of lighting and things to do on it, so there is still a little bit of work left, but we are definitely in the home stretch, and we're excited to get it finished and to share it with everybody. Wow. Yes, the movie, with its two-ish year turnaround, had already been completed that far along. You could literally spectate it and get the entire gist at this point. Quite clearly, too. 
And so with a deadline of December 2022 on HBO Max, it would make sense that five months prior we were in the final stages, and it's mentioned from several sources that Scoob 2 was practically 95% complete. But something must have gotten in the way to derail the project. Albeit in quite an unprecedented way to do it so far into production, and it all came from yet another corporate shift with a merger executing between Warner Media and Discovery, combining to produce the new Warner Bros. Discovery. And as the new CEO of this combined company comes David Zaslav. Notorious for his business mentality of show business over show friends, and he, with the new controls over Warner Bros. Media, decided cutting costs and writing offs were the way forwards. As with Scoop 2, the company will reportedly look to take a tax write-off on the incomplete production. However, it's not as simple as that. There are a couple of odd complications with Scoob in particular. For one, the composers had already been paid, and they are one of the latest additions to a film's production timeline. So, ironically, they're gonna continue to finish the work as they were hired to do, despite it being more of a ghost of a project at this point. How ironic. It's a little dicey. And of course, the crew were not happy with this controversial decision. And we have the quotes to back it up. On Instagram, producer Tony Savoni piped up with, So what do you do when the movie is cancelled, but you've already paid for the stage and the musicians? You record the damn score! And from the co-writer corner, Paul Dini also popped up on Twitter with his thoughts, Yes, I'm a co-writer, but also, why cancel a 95% finished holiday movie this close to fall when you're guaranteed kids watching it right after Halloween at least until New Year's? Makes no business sense, especially as both kids and parents dug the WIP screening, which certainly makes sense to me, as it's probably what makes this example of cancellation so baffling. But there is purportedly an explanation, as the studio itself also released a statement regarding their reasons pitching it as part of a strategic shift and change in the company's business strategy. Just the fact that it's being done on an almost complete $40 million project makes it a particularly tough decision to actively roll out. Savoni also went on to say on a more personal level that, Yes, I am afraid this is true. This movie is practically finished and turned out beautifully. I am beyond heartbroken. But there is more to the tale than just that, as Scoob 2 wasn't the only casualty of this sudden change in direction. Batgirl was also the more notable production that was similarly cancelled through all the same reasonings. Approved back in 2021, this was originally part of a company-wide effort at Warner Brothers to generate feature films for HBO Max, and in their case, had already gone completed principal photography, test screenings, and most filmings. However, nowadays, the studio doesn't want to make big budgeted projects for HBO Max anymore, and has slowly been cutting back on all of the original content hosted on the streaming platform, because yes, the studio is prioritizing cost-cutting measures along with its theatrical strategy. They are downsizing HBO Max for Warner Discovery. Pulling off of streaming services at the height of its popularity in the industry, truly the smallest brain move possibly imaginable in this theatrical environment. But that is the new plan, and the results of this domino out to be all the more destructive. But first, back to Batgirl. From the directors Adil El Arbi and Bilal Fala, they both revealed that the cancellation of their project was as much a surprise to them as everybody else in a joint statement. However, at the very least, in their case, their project was far from finished. They David Zaslav for this project did decide to speak up directly and explain his decision, being quoted as saying, We're not going to release a film before it's ready. And by that I guess he just means, not at all. Batgirl was set to cost between 70 and 100 million dollars, which is certainly a heavier weight than Scoob, but apparently the decision to scrap the project was not driven by the quality of the film or the commitments of the filmmakers, but by the desire for the studio slate of DC features to be at a blockbuster scale. However, there were additional reports that early screenings of Batgirl were horrendous and unsalvageable. Not that it supposedly had an effect. Batgirl was set to have an interesting cast, with Leslie Grace, J.K. Simmons, Brendan Fraser, and Michael Keaton as Batman again. But now, they're out of commission. Which you gotta ask as well, with such a major project like that seemingly able to just vanish so swiftly? As a collaborating A-lister, do you really want to continue associating with a company like this that clearly pushes for the mentality of show business versus show friends? and sudden tax write-offs over giant, decently progressed projects. Though we haven't seen the effects of it yet, I can see this having a long-term effect later down the line of gaining a reputation
reputation for being unjust and untrustworthy as a company to choose to work with. But maybe that's just me. According to Warner Bros, the decision to not release Batgirl reflects our leadership's strategic shift as it related to the DC Universe and HBO Max. Leslie Grace is an incredibly talented actor and this decision is not a reflection of her performance. We are incredibly grateful to the filmmakers of Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Haunt and their respective casts and we hope to collaborate with everyone again in the near future. Overall, this seems to be a disastrous call with many outing it as controversial, all the while shooting oneself in the foot at a time when streaming services are at their peak. Or maybe the olden ways are the bestest ways. Either way, there's still one other caveat to this story, and that is the sorry state of HBO Max and Warner Discovery as the effect continues to move along. As as well as removing Scoob and the latest DC hit, the animation industry is of course taking the hardest hit. And my Twitter feed is absolutely filled with disaster stories, as HBO Max is rapidly dropping its libraries and cancelling projects left, right and centre. Center. The truest tragedy comes from some animated projects that will now be lost in contractual hell. Many Cartoon Network shows, for example, were sold off to run exclusively on HBO Max, but now with this merger going on, they've been taken down, and due to the complications of broadcasting rights and contracts, it could very well be the case that some of these projects will never see the official light of day again, as they've been mismanaged into a cage that no longer supports them. In some cases, such as Infinity Train, Cartoon Network has even gone and scrubbed clean any references to shows full stops from tweets, YouTube clips, and all of that, since they don't have the rights to showcase them anywhere else. Or, as said by the creator, of Tig and Seek, it's gone. It's all gone. And it all comes down to the dreadful state of the industry right now, the complications of broadcasting rights, and the sudden merger that is barraging its way into a six foot grave as seemingly fast as it can. But hey, I didn't like the original Scoob anyway. Is that enough to cover the loss of the jobs of the workers and the creative freedoms of the shows and the monopolizing state of the corporate overlords? No, no, it's probably not. Not to mention all the people that will give up on this industry as a whole for how unsupportive it is. But that was the rabbit hole of the cancelled Scoob 2. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Mm -hmm.